Hello and welcome to the GCA DMARC video series. My name is Shazad Mirza and I'm the Director of Operations. In this video, we are going to talk about MailChimp and we're going to talk about how to actually implement MailChimp so that way you can actually send mail on your behalf and have DMARC still in place. So right now, the way we're, the domain we're going to be using is gotdmark.org. So the way we're set up right now is if I go into my DNS on GoDaddy, you'll see that I have SPF in place for just Outlook.com. So there's nothing here about MailChimp whatsoever. We also have the DKIM keys that are required by Outlook.com or Microsoft and Office 365 in order to, for this to work correctly and be able to send mail. And then we have our DMARC policy set to quarantine at this point in time. And the reason we're sending it at quarantine is so that way when I do these little demos and actually send mail, you can actually see them what happens with the messages. So in a previous video when I was showing people on what we have is just SPF without any DMARC or then adding DMARC, what happened is, is that when we added DMARC and put it into quarantine, any messages that were being sent by um, that were being sent by MailChimp were now going to spam. So if I go to my spam folder, here's the message that was sent by uh, MailChimp. And if I go into Outlook, for example, as well, it's looking at junk mail. Here's the other message that was actually sent by MailChimp as well. So, and the same thing with, with Gmail as well. So at this point now, what do we need to do in order to set it up so that MailChimp can actually send messages on our behalf? Because we now say that MailChimp is authorized and it is allowed to do so. So what are you going to do here is when you're in MailChimp, you're logged in with your account. You click up here at the top and then you're just going to go down to account. And then once the account page loads, what you're going to do is you're going from here is you're going to go into settings and choose verified domains. So again, that was settings, verified domains. So under verified domains, this is where you're going to see that verification, for example, has got DMARC is verified for sending. However, authentication is not set up. So you could, what you need to do is custom, what this will do is by doing authentication is you, instead of messages being sent by MailChimp via MailChimp servers, what will happen is it's going to actually use your domain name. So now you're letting MailChimp use your domain and say you are allowed to send on behalf of goddmark.org. So how do you do this? So the nice thing about this is, is that it actually has the setup instructions right here for you. So if you just click on this link, this is what's going to happen. And these are the things that you need to create in order for this to work. So you would create the DKIM key, like it says, you create a C name record for this address and this value. For SPF, this is what you would need to create. So let's do the DKIM key first because that's gonna be a, bit, a little bit easier. So what we'll do is I'm gonna copy this and then we just need to remember it's gonna be K, and the name of the record is gonna be K1 dot underscore domain key. So I'm gonna go back to DNS. I'm gonna add another record. So you can have multiple DKIM keys that is perfectly allowed and easy to do. So it's a K1 dot underscore domain key. And that's it, that's the name of the host. We don't need to put the rest, the, the dot got dmark dot org, it'll automatically add that. Then you get to find where it points to. So just like it's we copied, it's going to go to dkim.mcsv.net, so the MailChimp servers. And we can leave the time to live as one hour, that's perfectly fine. So we'll click on save. Now we have the domain key in place for that as, as they require. Next thing is to create the SPF record. So now the thing is, is you're not actually going to create an SP, a new TXT record for gotdmark.org because there's already one that exists. You sh should not have and cannot have multiple SPF records. You only need one. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take the portion that we need. So the portion we need here is include colon servers.mcsv.net. We're going to copy that and we're going to put that in our current SPF record. So right here we have our includes. We just going to go in and edit. So we're just going to go towards the end here. So before the hyphen all, we're just going to put that in and make sure there's a space. So at this point here, what we're doing now is we have our SPF version. We're saying that we're including our Outlook servers, but now we're including all the MailChimp servers as well. So dash all, we click on save. Now the next part is important as well because now that everything is there, everything is saved, we have to make sure that we actually authenticate the domain. This is a step that most people tend to forget. Because if you don't click on authenticate domain, nothing is still going to happen. Everything is still going to be work the way it was and things will still go to quarantine. So now we're going to authenticate domain. 
MailChimp is going to go out, check to confirm that these DNS records actually exist. So in this case, it didn't seem to find it. But like it says, DNS changes can take up to 24, 24 hours to do. So that's important to take note of. So this could take some time to actually go through. So if you have to wait, then the thing to remember is that go ahead and change this back to none, especially if you need to get those messages sent. So make it P equals none and, and have the, let those messages get sent, especially if it's something that's critical and then come back and make sure and, until the authenticate domain actually works. So again, it can take up to 24 hours, but here, as you can see, it didn't take too long. So now we have authentication set up. So if you had to, you could always disable authentication again, but you, and you can always view the instructions again as well. So that's really important. So now here, MailChimp is now authenticated. They're allowed to send, don't send on your behalf. So let's go ahead and let's go back to our campaigns. Let's send this message again and see what happens. So let's click on the report. We're going to replicate this, so we'll send the same exact one again because last time it went to the quarantine. So again, it's going to go to recipients. It's going to go to Gmail user, a Gmail user. It's going to go to Yahoo user, and it's going to go to a Outlook.com user. It's still going to come from me, so at gotdmark.org. So we're going to just keep that, and then everything else is going to stay the same. So go ahead and click send. We want to confirm, it's click send again. And now at this point, if everything is set up correctly, and even though our DMARC is set to quarantine, these messages should go to the inbox of each of the recipients. So again, this may take a little bit of time in terms of sending it. That was an old message there. Let's see if we can get one of these to send to have it. Here we go. So here we go now in Gmail, we got it in our inbox instead of spam folder. Let's try Yahoo. There it is. There's the new one. That's the most recent one. So there it goes. That's in the inbox as well. And then we go back here. We click on the inbox. Oh, it looks like it may have gone to the junk folder for Outlook. So if it went to the junk folder, it's most likely because of the fact that it didn't quite get ready and it didn't see where, where it needed to go. But at this point, as you can see, but once we implemented it and put in the correct SPF record and the correct information, granted, Two out of three actually work, but you know this is where, again, you need to give it a little bit of time to replicate through and be recognized via DNS. So that could take some time. But just to quickly show you at this point, now that we have this, we have what we needed for DNS for, for MailChimp, and we have our DKIM key. Everything is going through at this point. And then the other thing that I want to show you is, is now instead of saying via, it is actually coming from, it actually see, appears that it's coming from your organization. So this is other steps that you need to do with MailChimp and this is also going to be the step that you're going to take with other third-party providers as well because they all are going to do what you need to do uh, and you need to put in the appropriate SPF records and the appropriate DKIM keys if necessary. So just remember with SPF you just add it to the record uh, 